let's go and discuss something about yesterday we have discussed how to declare a variable and how to assign data type of a variable then we discussed different different type of data type like string number and object type okay i know that if people are not able to understand this interface concept okay as of now you just left it here i later will go and discuss in depth on the interface okay and later we also learn about the functions now, uh, means how we can go different uh, different different kind of functions in uh, in TypeScript. Like there are three kind of function you can define. One is uh, this kind of declaring the function. Second one is which is the one, and third one is the third one is the lambda functions. Okay, let's go and discuss about uh, different different uh, like in function how we can do uh, different different type of operations. Okay. Let me go and create one uh, let me go and create one function uh, ts file we'll learn what are the different different uh, features available in a function as you know like um, as you know in function to define a function we required suppose let um, suppose r function okay then we will go and suppose norm one uh, number and norm two number and then greater than equal to we have to go and write console.log norm one right this is the example of write a function so what i did i create a function the function name is add the function name is add means uh, name of function is add two params all are number type here yeah. norm one norm two are the number type now what happened now i want to do some operation in here like just example in this case I will define another uh, function called let calculation okay just example let calculation norm1 let's see this one okay norm1 number norm2 number and operator op means operator is a string type you know this is a function this is also a function it's a calculation function what i'll do <coughs> based on the operator based on the operator i need to calculate this norm1 and norm2 okay and here what i'm expecting i'm expecting this calculation should return some result result means in the earlier days, we have learned about when you learn about functions, we have learned the concept of a return, right? If you remember the concept in the function, if you want to go, if you want to return something, then you are using the return, right? In the same way, in TypeScript, if you want to return something, you have to use the same keyword called return. But here, there is some differences there. Because return means you have to tell to this uh, our application what you want to return means what means what are the what is the data type you want to return in this case suppose you want to return a number in a function if you want to return a number if you want to return a string or if you want to return anything then you have to specify the return type means what i'm trying to say it here if your function returning something then you have to write the return type return type means in this function if you are going to return something then you will go here and give a colon and give a return type means what is happening this function is saying this function is accepting this three parameter after this three parameter taking you are returning this number okay let me show you something here if you go and write some code like switch P case plus when I am passing the case plus 
then what will happen i need to return <clears throat> i need to suppose let a uh, suppose um, result number type equal to 0 means i have declared a variable called result okay with default value 0 what will happen here if my operator is plus then what will do result equal to num1 plus num2 finally what will do i will do return Got it just try to understand here it will, uh, basically what i am saying if you are declaring a variable in javascript okay if a javascript let me open that javascript one also you will understand that class code that just a second function class right in function we have declared if you remember that one in that case we require you can see this function calculate calculate function in calculate function we have to do the same thing num1 num2 operator then we are doing all these things finally we return the sum but here what happening the things we we uh, in javascript we don't know what is the return type like right? whatever the type would return because here we are not defining any type of return but in case of the typescript when you declare a function and if your function returning something then you have to specify the return type then what then what i'm saying if you want to specify the return type of a function they have to use after your function body means after your function parameter you have to use this colon and return type okay let me write the um, syntax for that then the function the, then is a param then you have a return type got it <clears throat> clear on means if you want to specify because why you are doing because in a typescript you want to go and define everything as a type means you have to define what is your function going to return now what will happen now instead of a result if i go and return x y z you can see that it's saying the string is not assignable to number means this function is expecting number should be a return type means data whatever data is the function going to return it is a return type you cannot pass apart from this uh, number you cannot pass the string due to that it's saying that it is not this this is a string type okay now what happened what is the benefit of doing this the benefit is like you saying to the developer like what when you're going to write a program you are saying that okay you need to call this calculation function and this calculator calculation function is going to return a number type how to use this one suppose you have to use suppose um, uh, const uh, result one result one equal to calculation then num one sorry num one equal to about 10 20 operator suppose plus you go and console dot log this result so you can see able to see the plus all these things and see that the result is a number type means what i'm trying to say it here in, in a function if you are returning something and in that case if you are uh, trying to return something then you have to use this type of colon operator then of in the return type as it is a function parameter the return type okay clear this is the way you have to return a return a value now you will ask me then what is the default return type of this function means in this function we are not returning anything you can see that in this function we are not returning anything so here we are specify that we are returning number and here we specify that we are returning nothing if a function not returning anything the default return type is a void okay you have to understand if a function not returning anything then default return type is void means this is a void one void means if you specify means you are you are avoiding to return 
void means you are avoiding to return if you go and specify the, the type apart from void then you have to definitely you have to return the value if you go and specify void that is a default one if you specify don't specify then default return type of a function is a void means void means it's saying you are not going to return anything to this function okay that is the difference between a return type and a, and a void type clear then understand if someone asks you what is the default return type of a function you will say as a void void means you are not returning anything <clears throat> and if you want to specify the return type of this one you have to specify as a whatever return type you want it's a number it will be any type okay it's up to you clear then got it then you, what you learn here you have to learn how to how to return a data type in a function okay this is one part we clear let's go and discuss about something else here difference between void and you got it void means that is no, no return type means this function is not going to return anything to you and if you go specify any, any other type it's going to return something to you okay let's go this is the concept of return type let me write write one return type you have a learn return type then we'll go and learn about optional type the optional type let me guys let me create different different Okay. Then we'll learn about optional function theorem. What is function theorem? You, you, you got it right. This is our, let me write. You learn it here how to how to return type a, how to return a value from a function then we will go and learn about the option optional type okay what is optional type let me copy the same one okay same function so calculation The function name is OPT calculation. Okay, optional calculation. I have declared function called optional calculation. Now, what happened here? I have passed norm one, norm two, and optional. Okay, now here, what will happen to calling this function? I will do suppose console, I will do OPT calculation. I have to pass a norm one norm 2 suppose norm 1 10 norm 2 20 and i have to pass the operator right now what i'm trying to say it here in the optional parameter suppose you want to pass a parameter and that you don't want to pass the value means let me let me show you something here what you'll do if you pass the question mark pass this question mark then what will happen if you don't pass anything if you don't pass anything then what will happen this one treat as a optional okay let me tell you again if in a function if in a function if you specify the question mark to a to a param means you can see that here op i have uh, add the question mark if i pass this question mark to a parameter of a function then the function is treated as this is a 
optional parameter optional means if you pass it's okay if you don't pass also it's okay due to you can see that if i go and call this function two time if it pass here plus it's going to accept if i'm not passing anything here it is also going to call but if i go to this function return and instead of doing that if i go and pass if i don't pass here you can see that I don't pass here you can see that it's saying that this function the expected th uh, three arguments but got two it's saying that this function expecting this three argument but i am passing this two param if you go and check this function opt okay if you check the function opt you can see that the same function i have called two times okay one is i have passed three parameter and one is i have passed the two parameters now you can see that in the last example in this example if i don't pass also this parameter then what will happen it is not going to throw an error why it's not going to throw an error it's saying that if you are using this question mark uh, or like this question mark uh, operator like question mark this this one if you add symbol in any of the uh, parameter then what will happen it will treat as a optional parameter that is the, the that is the beauty of a optional parameter you can see the difference here you passed three params here you pass two params then what happened this parameter is optional then based on the optional only you are doing the, all these things now there is a question if it's optional then what will happen then how i can go and check that is optional or not for that you know that we have option called type of okay now you know if there is a no type is specified let me log it okay let me log op okay let me run log this op what we'll do let me go uh, to cd functions and what we'll do um, tsc func hyphen opt dot ts let me run it okay once i run you can see that the function of pretty js is there then what i'll do and i'll do node func hyphen opt dot js you can see it displaying this one as undefined you can see this two data is displaying here one is plus another is undefined because we have called two time one is the first function where you pass the plus operator and second option is second calling where we are not passing anything and what happened if you go and log the op you can see that it's happening the plus is the first for first function is giving the plus and second function it's giving me undefined means there is a there is a question here if you don't pass any parameter to a optional parameter then default will be optional the default will be undefined means default default type of the optional parameter is undefined you guys got it if you go and don't pass any parameter to a function and if that parameter is optional then default data will be the undefined means if you want to check is there or not just example if op if type of op not equal to undefined okay means you have to check what you what you are checking you are checking type of I, I i told you type of type of is check the type of the variable means if you want to check what is the type of a parameter or type of a variable then you have to use the type of keyword then type of 
the operator means it's the keyword not equal to undefined means you are saying that what are you what you are checking you are checking that opt on is not undefined okay if not undefined what you want to do if it's undefined what you want to do it's up to you means what i'm trying to say it here if you are passing any optional parameter then if you want to check the optional parameter is given or not given then you have to check like this way suppose op equal to undefined means suppose type of op equal to undefined to treat as okay op is not passed else means you are saying that if op equal to undefined then you are checking that okay op is passed or not passed means the argument is passed or not passed if it's passed then you have to do your programming if if not passed you have to do your programming if passed then you have to do your programming means here the typescript is giving you functionality in where you can go and pass a optional parameter to a function then you will ask what is the benefit of that right benefit you like that suppose in some of the functions suppose this kind of parameter is not there then it's optional or not optional it's up to you based on that you want to do the calculus you can see that this is the things you are performing this is one of the because based on the uh, <coughs> based on the application uses you have to define your function parameter is optional or not optional just example what i'll do if my op is undefined means if op is not passed in the argument not passed in the argument then what will do i'll do op equal to plus now what i'm trying to say it here if someone don't pass this oper operator then default i will assign this op to plus one let me do show you Just a second, guys. Sorry. You can see that <clears throat> what I did. Sorry, that on defined you have to put inside this uh, this bracket the single quote. What I do it here. If I go and if I check the op is undefined or not. If it's undefined, I have assigned this op as default as plus right then what will happen let me run it you can see that here i have logged this op and you can see that in the function parameter one we have passed plus and function parameter two we do not pass anything okay if i call this one you can see that you can see that i can able to get two plus plus here why because i have a return code here if i have the op is undefined the op should be a plus let me change it to minus we can see the difference okay you can see that in the output i can able to see 
plus because this is the function we are passing the plus and second one we are seeing minus because why here if you don't pass anything we are checking in the code like okay the op is undefined it's a yes if it's undefined then make the op equal to minus means the we are assigning another value to the op this is the case where you can use different different type of optional parameter okay let me summarize this one optional parameter is used to pass the parameter if it's required or not required means if you, you if you are declaring a parameter to a function and make sure that this parameter is not required or not required means it's optional then you have to put this question mark symbol after this variable name once you pass the question mark symbol then what will happen your function is not going to ask the third parameter means what will happen it's not going to ask a third parameter uh, for that reason if what happen if if someone not pass that parameter that is the problem it will going to get the undefined okay means this one getting the undefined if you want to handle okay this parameter is passed or not passed to a function then you have to check this type of if using the type of operator if you go and check the type of operator type of then operator name equal to equal to undefined means it's saying that okay if this operator is undefined as i told if you don't pass anything to a function the by default the type will be undefined type okay then we'll check type of op equal to undefined then what will happen for that reason if you want to do any other operation you can do that what i did it here if my operator is a undefined then i will assign the operator as a minus okay then whatever i want to do i will do that okay same way if i go to break and i will do minus okay clear all about the optional parameter optional parameter is same as a normal parameter the only difference is it's it's optional to pass the function after it's optional to pass a function the default value is undefined based on the undefined you want to do your programming okay <clears throat> clear what we learn it here we have learned about We learn about how, what is a function return type, how to return a function value, then we return the optional one, means how to define a optional function. Let's go and discuss about default parameter, okay? Let's go and discuss about default parameter. Default parameter. default param let me show you what is a default parameter let me do let me copy this one okay and paste it here and change the function name to default calculation okay it in previous example what we did we have mark this one as a optional okay but in some of the function, instead of passing this one as optional, suppose you want to pass a default value. Okay, default value means what? In this function, what I am trying to say it here, I will pass the default value to a argument. Example, I will go here and pass default equal to plus. Means, say it here. You can see that what happening here I have operator operator this operator parameter but instead of operator what I am defining I am defining one default value means if you pass it's okay if you don't pass what will happening here we are checking the type in the case of optional parameter if you pass it's okay if you don't pass we have to checking this kind of like type of is on defender or not but in case of function default function well default param what will happen you are not going to define it's optional means it's a required but instead of marking as required you are defining as a default value means if someone go and call this function okay about 10 20 
and suppose plus it's going to work same way the function suppose 10 20 and minus it's going to work and same way if I go and I suppose 10 20 and don't pass anything then what will happen this is also going to work means here the third parameter the third parameter if you don't pass here then automatically the system is going to take plus as a default value but if you go and check this optional parameter if you don't pass this one then we have to do the checking the condition okay this is, if this is um, undefined then what i need to do but here what you did you did like instead of passing the optional parameter you have to define the value if you don't pass anything here then by default the operator will be the plus value let me do it do for you okay let me comment these two function okay what i did whatever operator i have passed i have log it here let me go there what i'll do i'll tsc function default dot tsc okay my function i uh, compile successfully then what i'll do node suppose function dot hyphen uh, uh, default dot js you can see it is displaying plus right means what i did if i call this function default calculation i did not pass any variable okay i did not pass any variable um, i did not pass this argument but what i defined here this option whatever i passed its default value is plus means if i passed it's okay if i don't pass the parameter then this parameter will be default will be plus due to that if i did not pass it here it's displaying as me the plus the same way if i go and if i pass it here suppose minus okay if i go and pass it minus you have to check that okay it's a plus and minus means if you don't pass default value will be this one if you pass then whatever value you are going to pass that is the parameters there then you have a question what is the difference between a optional parameter and a function parameter the things will be here the optional parameter like here you 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 need to pass the parameter you don't need to pass the value the same but if the optional parameter is not there then you have to write your program you have to check that okay what is the value if it's undefined undefined means if there is no past then it will be giving you undefined once you get the undefined then what will happen you have to write your program to handle this one the same thing we are doing in default parameter instead of making that one is a default making this one is a default one we are passing the value means if someone don't pass the argument then this is going to be assigned default to this parameter you clear it right you clear it means if you don't pass anything automatically whatever the default value you assign here that is the parameter value here you can see if you don't pass here by default op will be plus but in case of optional if you don't pass if you don't pass then it is that that is the default value will be undefined you have to handle all these things clear clear the difference between optional and uh, default guys these are the functions if you're going to write program in future it is required you have to know that how you can call a default parameter and optional parameter it's up to you you have to go and tell all these things write all these things okay you have to know how it's going to work okay uh, clear The third one will be let's go and discuss about rest par rest function okay what rest function let me create something function rest dot rest uh, type script okay 
what is the rest function let me giving one example okay what is the example my example will be let me uh, the requirement will be rest My example will be uh, I want to uh, suppose plus two number. I want to plus two number means in, you have to define a function where you have to pass one or two, two parameter. Suppose I want to uh, some three number, then you have to pass three parameter, four parameter, five. Suppose I want to do summation of hundred parameter. Just example. You want to write a function in a function. You want to sum hundred parameter then are you going to define a function just example let rest function equal to you will write num1 number num2 number are you going to write this 100 times parameter it's not possible right suppose i want to sum a thousand number in that case what happened this um, i script giving a rest parameter rest means instead of write instead of declaring the parameter that many times you have to use the triple dot operator it is called spread operator okay spread just imagine spread operator triple dot operator and let me giving us suppose a params or suppose numbers and define the number as array Don't be confused, I'm going to explain all these things. What I did, suppose my intention will be let me sum list of value. Means I have a, a 1 to 100 I want to sum. To create a function, to sum all these things, I have to declare a function that should accept 100 parameter. But actually this is not possible, right? To overcome that type of issue, okay, in the TypeScript, there is a concept called spread operator. Spread means spread or rest operator. Rest we call as triple dot. What you did here, you will go and pass triple dot and triple dot should be a array type. It's not a string type, it's an array type. What will happen? If you go and call this function, you will go and call rest function and what will do, you will pass suppose 1. It's going to work. Rest function will go and pass 1, comma 2. It's also work. Rest function will go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's going to work. Or if you go and pass from n number of parameter, it's going to work. You will say how it's going to work. Means you can see that. I have not defined any parameter up to 10. I have not defined any parameter up to 2 or 1. But what happened when you go and in a function, if you use this triple dot operator, means the spread operator or a rest operator, then what will happen? The function is now co comes to dynamic function, means it's a dynamic type of parameter. Means whatever parameter you are going to pass, then what will happen? Automatically, the function is going to and convert this parameter to an array. Just remember, if you pass all this parameter here, what will happen? The function is going to automatically convert all this parameter to an array. Whatever array you define is going to convert this array. Then what will happen? You already know that in function, if you want to sum it, then we have a number. Numbers is the function name. Then for each, for each means like, okay, for each we will learn later. Let me do that. Suppose um, for, we have learned for, for let i equal to 0, i is less than numbers dot length, then i plus plus, right? The, we have a loop function. Then let me define let result equal to 0. Then result plus equal to numbers of i return result you can see it here what will happen if i go and pass all this data then what will happen 
is going to treat as a array. What I did, I get the array and length and loop it and give the result. Let me do one thing. Let me log all these things. Let me log this function. Okay. Let me run it. You can see that how it's working. TSC comp uh, uh, compiler function hyphen rest dot ts. Okay, then node function hyphen rest dot ts. Sorry. Okay, guys, you can see that. The three parameters, three output is coming. One is function one. I passed one. Then next I have passed one, two. 2 plus 1 equal to 3. Then 1, 2, 10 equal to 55. You can see that how it's work. I mean, the same function, the same function, the only difference is the parameter, means the argument is now dynamic. You got my point? Is that the parameter is now dynamic. Means whatever parameter you are going to pass, what will happen internally, this function is converting this one to as a array and it's up to you if you go to pass and based on the your requirement you loop it and display the data clear the, the difference between the rest parameter rest parameter means it's just the argument will be the dynamic if you pass 100 arguments it's going to pass it but what happening internally if you are going to pass this argument automatically automatically the function is going to convert this parameter to an array and you, once you get the array you can write a program to do that okay this is our rest function now let me go and we'll go to the back or loop okay in a loop we have a learn about the for loop how the for loop work it's work as a let you have initialization you have a condition increment or decrement okay now what happening here you can see that in the problem for case we have to declare a variable and we have to check a length then we have to do a increment and decrement okay this is a basic stop to go and iterate one by one item suppose in this function in this loop you are what you are doing you are just incrementing one by one right one by one means suppose one two three four five six to ten then you are go one, then go two, then go three, then go four. You are going one by one by one item. In Java, JavaScript, what will happen? Instead of writing all this long syntax, that is another syntax, if you are going to use, then no need to do initialization, no need to do the condition, no need to do this increment and decrement. Then you ask how can no need to do in increment. Then what is that? The simple one is if you are go work on a array array means you can say numbers is the array then you have to do numbers then you have to use for each means for each it means let me draw something for each means when you declare a when you declare an uh, array then what will happen for loop suppose total length is suppose total length is one suppose zero index one uh, two three four the total length is five right the so five is the total length of this array in the for loop what happening you are going to zero index then you are doing plus plus is going to this index then going to plus this index then going to plus this index then going to plus this index and until this condition gets satisfied then it's out going to take out of this loop then what are you doing you are declaring one initial variable all the time you are checking the condition 
and you are doing plus plus for increment okay to do all this kind of stuff like writing for loop in the javascript there is a concept called for each the for each is only going to work on array array means list of object where the item is a list list means this array kind of stuff what will happen if you implementing this for uh, for each then you no need to declare any initialization no need to do any uh, suppose condition no need to do any increment or decrement then you ask what what then i need to do means are i told this initialization not required condition is not required increment is not required but what is required when you use any for each loop when you use in for each loop for each loop then what will happen internally internally the for is going to do all this work for you but you no need to do initialization condition and increment decrement means if you go and use for each function okay what will happen you have to give that item means it will be item one what will happen like if you for each this one we are getting this specific item from this uh, um, for this um, array we are using number of i right means we are declaring a variable and passing the index or getting the value instead of doing all this stuff if you go and number dot for each then just add any any of the parameter any of the parameter means the parameter returning by this for each item or x y z whatever you want right if, if you log it log this item then you can see that this one is same as this one. Understand? If you go and use this for each loop, then you have to do a lot of thing here, right? But if you go and use this for each one, the benefit is like that. You no need to do all this initialization, declaration, and accessing the individual item. Here you simple, right? the item name means the collection of item it's array then dot for each for each means you are go and accessing each and every item then once this is for each then what will happen it's giving you an item means giving an this specific item and what will happen if it is for is going to work it is first will go to this block and this is the data it will give to you next it will go to this one this is going to execute and give the data to you means each and every loop means where you going to do the for loop the same case the for each loop it will go each and every step means it will go each and every step to one by one by one then it will give a value to access this value we have to use this concept called item item means you can give any name suppose i am giving abc i am giving m it's up to you how you can means you are creating an instance of this item once for each loop is going to loop one by one by one then what will happen once loop it's giving you this data okay this data to access this data you can use any of the variable just declare a variable the variable going to store the each and every item okay for that reason i have written here item you want to access the item so whatever things you are doing this here the same thing you are also doing this here also but only difference is here in the for loop you have a you have a condition to increment and decrement means you can increase by your number i can increase by one or i, I can increase by two or I, I can increase by three it's up to me how i can define the steps but in case of for each loop if the for each is always going to be step always going to be forward by one by one means in case of loop you can control the jump means i can jump from here to here or i can jump from here to here you can decide you can design that one using the plus plus or whatever the increment decrement operator but in case of for each loop what will happen it will go always always one by one okay that is the use of for each for each means each and every individual item you have to loop loop for that reason it's each by each item clear that is the use of for each but you can see that if you use for each loop either you are going to define a variable either you are going to check the condition or either you doing the increment or you can accessing the variable using the index what happening 
all this line of code all this line of code is going to convert in a single function that is the use of for each clear then what i'll do instead of writing this for each then i will do write same thing means whatever this code is equivalent to this one only clear instead of writing all this code and this you can see only two lines and there is no nothing variable nothing is there you can go into you can go to achieve this one this is the use of for each now you will ask me here in this for loop what happening you can able to access sorry you can able to access the index of each and every item means due to i am doing for loop what happening here i am accessing this zero index because i have this loop getting the one zero one two three four whatever index right but in case of for each what happening i am accessing the value always understand in case of for you can accessing the index and based on the index you are getting the value but in case of for each you can see that you are only accessing the value and in case of for loop you are based on the index you are getting the value this is a two difference you have to remember in case of for you are accessing the value based on the index but in case of for each you are accessing the you are direct accessing the value instead of index but if in for each if you want to access the value as well as the index for that what will happen you have to write this kind of function means the for each is returning two type of value one is item item means this item item means this two three four this item if you want to access this in particular item index okay particular item index then you have to use item comma index then you have to suppose you have to go and log the index you can able to see the index means what i am saying here the same thing you can do in for each the only difference is for each by default is returning the item if you want to access the index of the item also you can use this round bracket you can see that this is a uh, this is a like the lambda function right this is the, the value and this is the index okay based on the index if you want to do anything you can do that but it's up to you how you can use this one means let me copy this function and show you how you can do that last just a second the same function this for each it's without index if this one is with index based on a requirement you can go and use these functions okay it's up to you how you can go and use this type function based on requirement means in some of the for each you want to access the index then you have to use this type of type of index function means you can write anything here it's just a variable name you can if you want to access the index you can use the index one if you don't access the index then you have to use the simple item one okay this is one of the advanced version of for same thing actually in this function internally they are doing the same thing the only difference is here we are writing all the code our manually but the for each loop all the code are written internally okay that is the use of for each and this for loop clear let me summarize what we learned today we have learned today in the function first return the we have learned your function return type if a function is declaring because as i told earlier it a function uses will be it should be dynamic and it should be parameterized and it should be return means a function should be work as a parameter and it should be return but in some of the cases if your function don't want to uh, like return something then you have to use void if you don't use also void then the default parameter default return type, return type will be void okay if you want to return something then you have to write the return type to write return type you have to use this colon operator the return type and if you specify the return type then end of the function you must have to return that value okay next we learn about the optional optional means in a function if you don't want to pass 
any any of the parameter any of the parameter then you have to use this optional parameter to make a parameter as optional then you have to use the question mark now after this variable declaration it will make as optional to handle the optional we have to check this type of condition like if the op, like parameter is of undefined or not based on that you have to write the logic okay and always remember the optional always be the last parameter okay don't be pass in first parameter you don't pass here to here okay not going to work why it's not going to work it's saying that you can see a required parameter cannot follow a optional parameter okay always remember this optional parameter always be passed in the last okay this is the optional parameter then we go for default parameter the default parameter is same as optional parameter but in optional parameter we are not passing any value but in case of default parameter we are passing some default value if you pass or don't if you don't pass the parameter value then automatically the whatever value is specified here it's going to the default value okay last we learn learn about the rest parameter rest parameter means if you are going to pass the parameter as dynamic then dynamic means it's going to pass the parameter as means as whatever requirement then you have to use the rest parameter to, to enhance the rest parameter you have to use the triple dot operator it's called a spread operator okay you use the spread operator then what will happen when you're going to pass this parameter here automatically this function is converting an array and once you get the array you 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 have the option like whatever you want to do you can do that okay and what do you learn extra today we learn instead of writing the for each loop to going the one by one item we can write the for each loop instead of writing for loop we can write the for each loop the for each loop is the same as for loop the only difference is like we are not doing any initialization condition and increment the for each loop is going to do all this for us internally okay